starting with tuberculosis. Uh, so tuberculosis, it is a chronic granulomatous inflammation, most commonly which includes uh, chronic inflammation. It is caused by a, is a bacilli, that is they are the microorganisms and these bacilli are known as tubercle bacilli or otherwise they are known as Koch bacilli. Since it was introduced, it was identified by um, a person, scientist called Koch. So it's called as, also called as Koch bacilli and it is um, the main uh, bacterial name is according to bacterial terminology is mycobacterium tuberculosis. And coming to the various strains of mycobacterium tuberculosis, they are the pathogenic strains as well as the non-pathogenic strains. Among the pathogenic strains that is which are harmful to our body, they are the mycobacterium tuberculosis hominis and uh, coming to the next species is bovis, next is africanum, microti, pinnipidae and canity. And so it uh, coming to the first most two important pathogenic strains that is the mycobacterium tuberculosis hominis is it is so-called hominous because it involves um, causing infection in the human beings. And uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis bovis is so-called because it causes um, pathogenicity in bovine species, that is in the guinea pigs uh, species. And then comes the uh, Africanum. It is so-called because it was most commonly seen affecting the people or the population including staying in the uh, parts of Central Africa. So it is so-called. And coming to the non-pathogenic strain, that is the Mycobacterium tuberculosis megmatatus. It is also a strain of tuberculosis Mycobacterium, which is not pathogenic to human beings. So these are certain Mycobacterium species. Coming to the epidemiology, how much it involves the population and the incidence of it. So because of great advances in chemotherapy and immunotherapy, tuberculosis is still continues to be worldwide in distribution. So, uh, because, because of the immunity level, since uh, tuberculosis is directly related to the host immune system, uh, development of the host immune system is based on the uh, manifestation of tuberculosis signs and symptoms. So, the TB still continues to be worldwide in the distribution and most commonly it is seen in um, countries like Africa, Latin America as well as in Asia. So, the exact incidence of the disease cannot be determined because all the patients infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis, they need not be, uh, there's no master need to that the patient should manifest the infections uh, with the clinical signs and proper clinical signs and symptoms of the tuberculosis because certain patients, they have a well-developed host immune system which has a defensive function how to fight against this bacteria and helps in not... Um, uh, manifesting the symptoms and thereby it kills the bacteria so that the host is being protected by a host immune defense system when a patient is being infected or exposed to this mycobacterium tuberculosis. So it's not necessary that all the patients who are infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis need to be uh, 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 need to be showing clinical signs and symptoms. So many cases they remain reactive to tuberculin which is a uh, which is a drug which is being injected into the patient to know whether there is a patient is uh, that you're suffering from from tuberculosis so many patients many cases they remain reactive to tuberculin uh, but they do not show any symptomatic disease this is what it means in the epidemiology coming to the contributing factors factors which actually cause uh, uh, the tuberculosis to sustain in our body and uh, develop more uh, rapidly and show more manifestations it is a first coming as malnutrition as already explained Immune, uh, immune system act, uh, actually is based on the proper intake of proper dietary conditions with a high protein food or something like that. So when the uh, nutrition is not proper with proper protein intake and uh, nutrient intake, then uh, it might result in malnutrition and the patient might show proper contributing factors for the growth of the tuberculosis uh, bacteria which has been already ingested into the patient and the patient might develop uh, might develop tuberculosis so malnutrition acts one of the contributing factors next coming is inadequate medical care in spite of being observing that the tuberculosis is present in a patient and being negligent might help in the, in the progression of the tuberculosis so inactive medical care is also one of the contributing factor next coming to power, poverty and crowding so in areas like when there's unhygiene uh, food or being in taken or um, unclean water which is being taken these um, might have a uh, more uh, more prone to uh, increase the risk of uh, attaining tuberculosis in these areas of poverty and crowding areas and uncontrolled diabetes so when the diabetes condition of the patient is not being controlled it might act as a contributing factor thereby providing proper conditions for the bacteria to survive in the body and to start showing its effect by releasing uh, its pathogenicity
and alcoholism is also called one of the contributing factor then coming to immunocompromise that is uh, in hiv patients we most commonly see that the um, tuberculosis is one of the uh, infection which is most commonly seen in this patient it is because of the compromised uh, immune system of the body host defense system so these are these uh, certain contributing factors next coming is atypical mycobacterium among the mycobacterial uh, tuberculosis there is another strain known as atypical mycobacterium which is a non tuberculous mycobacterium it is so called because these bacteria are not as virulent as that of the classical tuberculous species they are also a mycobacterial species which are widely distributed in the environment and so they are also known as environmental microbacteria and they are acid philes that is they resist the acid uh, acidity uh, which is a physical property of the bacteria and uh, show dilution for the acid and thereby do not stain with the regular staining procedures but only with acid fast stains and occasionally uh, they cause your tb in human beings that is tuberculosis in human beings not as uh, classically as a classical mycobacterium tuberculosis and they are resistant to the anti tuberculous drugs that is they do not show in spite of being patient or being on even giving therapy to the um, to tuberculosis uh, they do not respond properly that is that what means resistance to antibacterial drugs coming to the classification of this atypical mycobacterium species uh, otherwise known as environmental mycobacteria based on the speed of the growth in the media they have been classified into rapid uh, growers as well as slow growers rapid growers are the uh, species of the atypical mycobacterium usually which grow within 7 weeks uh, within a week that is within a 7 days of duration they start growing among them a few illustrations are mycobacterium abscessus mycobacterium fortuitum and then mycobacterium kelloni these are certain species which show rapid growth when they are being cultured in a proper media accurate media and coming to the slow growers they usually take more than uh, more than a week that is uh, up to 2 to 3 weeks or beyond that for their growth when they have been cultured and among them there are the examples of such slow growing mycobacterium species atypical mycobacterium species are mycobacterium avia intracellularly mycobacterium canasi and then mycobacterium ulcerans and mycobacterium fortuitum these are certain species which usually grow very slow when they are being cultured next coming to the colony in the culture color in the culture that is uh, these atypical mycobacterium which when they are being cultured they uh, produce certain pigments so they are being uh, classified classically based on the colony culture in colony color which they produce when they have been cultured among them photochromogens are one they are so called because photochromogens because these uh, bacteria only produced um, grow only in the presence of light and they produce certain yellow color pigments when they are grown in such conditions next coming to scotochromogens these are the chromogens which they have a property to produce pigments when they are grown either in the light or either in the dark any kind of conditions they grow and other than that they also produce pigments coming to the non chromogens uh, in whatever conditions these bacteria are being cultured or grown they do not produce any chromo uh, pigment so they are known as non chromogens so these are certain uh, atypical mycobacterium species and the classical classification based on the culture in the growth as well as colony color in the culture next coming to the uh, clinical features of mycobacterium uh, atypical mycobacterium or environmental bacterium is that they are usually a uh, infection which is being acquired from the environment uh, unlike the uh, classical tuberculosis which is being usually from a person to person contact or inhalation of the um, it's an since it's an airborne disease also sometimes when a patient with the already infected tuberculosis um, a company is a patient or a healthy patient uh, unlike that it is uh, no, there's no requirement of any exposure to such infect infected environment but rather it is usually present within the environment causing atypical mycobacteriosis so it is known as atypical mycobacteriosis among them the certain five disease patterns they are the pulmonary disease um, which usually affects the pulmonary area that is lung area and among them the species of mycob atypical mycobacteria are m canasi canasi and or otherwise mycobacterium av aviminum intracellularly these are certain species which cause pulmonary disease that is atypical mycobacterium in the pulmonary area coming to lymphadenitis that is which involve the lymph nodes atypical bacteria which involve the lymph nodes and causes atypical mycobacteriosis they are the mycobacterium avium intracellularly or otherwise mycobacterium scrofulosin so these are certain species coming to 
the other atypical mycobacteria which cause ulcerated skin lesions they are the mycobacterium ulcerans or otherwise mycobacterium marinum so these are species coming to those uh, atypical mycobacteria which cause abscesses they are the mycobacterium for Fortitum or otherwise Mycobacterium chelonae. And coming to those which cause bacteremia, that is the progressive bacterial infections, they are the Mycobacterium avium intracellular. So these are certain atypical mycobacteriosis conditions which involve particular areas in the human body and caused by particular species of the atypical mycobacteria. Coming to the association with the tuberculosis and a HIV or an immunocompromised patient is that the since tuberculosis is directly related to the immune system, host defense immune system, which actually protects the uh, individual from the, uh, these bacteria to grow within the environment of the host. So, uh, since HIV is a condition, human immunodeficiency caused by human immunodeficiency virus, uh, which uh, results in acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, that is, the patient is being immunocompromised because of the decrease in the CD4 T lymphocytes, which are the active lymphocytes, which help in um, fighting against the foreign bodies which enter the human host. So in HIV patients we see that the CD4 T lymphocytes which are the major cells to fight against the bacteria or the foreign antigens they are decreased in the number. So because of that the patients becomes immunocompromised that is uh, the patient itself allows uh, such an environment for the bacteria to grow because of lack of these CD4 cells in proper amount. So these um, so tuberculosis since it's directly related to the host immune system we see that there is a very high incidence of uh, uh, tuberculosis occurring in these HIV individuals and this um, HIV individuals usually when the tuberculosis starts uh, within these uh, patients body um, then the, we see that the disease actually progresses very rapidly and shows the active phases then compared to the normal individual who has been already infected with tuberculosis and also and other than that we also see certain other conditions also that it involves not only involves uh, since uh, primary tuberculosis classical primary tuberculosis only involves the pulmonary area whereas uh, we see in HIV that other than the pulmonary area other areas like extra pulmonary tuberculosis which is termed which involves the areas other than the lungs after it has infected the lung it can also spread to the lymph nodes that is the regional lymph nodes it could be the cervical or otherwise the mesenteric lymph nodes uh, or uh, otherwise the uh, other areas such as pleura, pericardium areas and so it uh, it might involve other areas other than the lung region and amongst the most common species which uh, uh, which co most commonly cause tuberculosis in HIV is mycobacterium avium intracellularly and usually we see when uh, the patient is being uh, suggests for certain uh, lab tests we see that the sputum from these patients of these age uh, age patient we see that the sputum shows a negative that is it does not uh, shows any presence of the mycobacterium species present uh, within the sputum but but when this such sputum is being cultured that is uh, the species which are has been suspected and further being uh, for further lab test is being advised we see that they are, when they are being cultured in particular accurate uh, uh, culture media um, we see that there is growth of this uh, uh, species by a bacterial species and it is known as culture positive in these patients so sputum smear is almost negative in AIDS patient and whereas the culture culture is positive Coming to the mode of transmission, usually we see that the patient uh, acquires um, such conditions uh, uh, conditions of tuberculosis uh, in general classical tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium species. Mm. The patient most commonly is uh, be, uh, being attained this tuberculosis condition because of inhalation that is from a person being already infected uh, who when the patient coughs and a uh, normal healthy individual is being uh, taken or uh, when he is inhaling this um, droplets which are being produced in the environment or the atmosphere and this is being ingested by the patient then uh, this results known as uh, one of the mode of transmission known as by inhalation that is it is mainly being carried by the macrophages coming to ingestion suppose a patient is being uh, taken something food or water which has been contaminated with the bacilli then it is known as one of the mode of transmission of ingestion uh, attained uh, ingesting uh, ingesting a uh, tube uh, infected or contaminated uh, water results in uh, development of tuberculosis and this ingestion could also be because of the self uh, swallowing of the sputum of the infected sputum which already contains this bacteria and when uh, the patient is himself self swallows then it also is it is also one of the mode of transmission for the uh, tuberculosis to occur 
other than that is a transplacental root where uh, the baby or the fetus it attains uh, this tuberculosis uh, because uh, from the maternal that is from the parental uh, trans uh, placental fluid uh, transformation or something like that where the baby might attain when it is in the fe uh, when it is in the fetal stage only which which might progress even after the baby attains growth another one is inoculation that is uh, which directly di direct contact to the skin so these are few modes of transmission of tuberculosis Coming to the spread of tuberculosis, it could be either by the local spread, which is being carried by the macrophages, um, on either because of inhalation, injection, or otherwise transplacental transplacental root, or otherwise it could also be because of the lymphatic spread. That is when these um, already uh, already uh, involved uh, uh, already involved or uh, lymph nodes which have been in, uh, infected with the tuberculosis since after the lung uh, the most common area for the tuberculosis to attack uh, in the host is um, it is a lymph node area so once uh, this lymph nodes are completely infected and since they drain or uh, the the lymphatic starts draining into the venous so the tuberculosis might also spread through the lymphatic spread and hematogenous spread uh, since, since the lymphatics drain the draining the vein venous might also result this venous spread is being carried out throughout the body and they, it, it might also cause results it might also result in tuberculosis next by the natural passages among the natural passages it could be the lung lesions being carried into the pleura or because of the tra trans bronchial spread that is within the bronchus only the the bacilli may, might be carried through the uh, interconnecting areas uh, within the lung and otherwise it could also be because of tuberculosis uh, sarcongitis into the peri peritoneal cavities from the um, that is from the it could be carried into the peri uh, bacilli could be carried into the peritoneal cavity or otherwise it could also be because of the infected sputum which is being directly carried out into the lung larynx Next, swallowing of the infected sputum. That is, it could be because of the cell swallowing or otherwise by accidental swallowing of the infected sputum. Or otherwise because of the contamination which is being done in the lab procedures also. It could be otherwise, uh, most commonly it is seen in post-mortem infection, infected uh, post-mortem infections also is one of the reasons for the swallowing of this infected sputum. Next, uh, other kind of natural passages, renal lesions which pa pass into the ureter and they are down to the trigone of the bladder. From there, they might uh, spread to the bladder. So these are few of the uh, routes for the transmission of the or tra for the spread of the tuberculosis from one area to the other within the same individual. Coming to the immunity uh, host defense system in the tuberculosis, since uh, it plays a major role in the tuberculosis development, it is important to know that the hypersensitivity and immunity, uh, how it works in a patient who has been infected with tuberculosis. We see that the hypersensitivity is a type 4 hypersensitivity, which is a delayed hypersensitivity. And uh, since tuberculosis is uh, muchly based on the result of the host response to the organisms, so it is important to know how the uh, how this delayed hypersensitivity works. And this high delayed hypersensitivity, it has been observed that it majorly works because of the lipids which are present either in the they are the mycocytes and the glycolipids. These lipids are usually present in the cell wall of the bacterium and they help in um, responding corresponding to the host immune system or developing uh, causing the activation of the uh, T lymphocytes which are uh, actual uh, cells which are involved in the host to fight against the foreign antigen such as this mycobacterium tuberculosis in an individual who has been infected and we see that in these patients that once the bacilli enters and these lipids start uh, 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 start initiating the uh, initiate the activation of the T lymphocytes which results cytokines and then they start fighting but in a patient who has been immunocompromised there is no such action rather these uh, uh, lipids which are present within the uh, bacterium cell wall only they dominate and uh, fight against the host immune system so among the glycolipids which are present in the bacterial cell wall is known as wax t and uh, other than that uh, um, the naturally uh, bacterial cell wall usually contains a uh, mycolic acid which also has a role in uh, developing the hypersensitivity and immunity in tb patients Coming to the tissue reaction to tuberculosis bacilli. So the tissue reaction it is of two phases that is the primary phase and the secondary phase. So infection is so based on the infection and the patient could be called as primary infection or the secondary infection. So the primary infection usually we see that uh, when uh, 
and uh, tuberculin is being injected intradermally to the patient uh, of, uh, into the skin that uh, we see in a primary infection case that there's no visible reaction uh, within 10 to 14 days in that patient that is the patient does not show any reaction for this tuberculin which has been injected intradermally but later at the inoculation site after 10 to 14 days uh, there might be a nodule which is which develops if the patient is containing this pathogenic strain of the tuberculosis bacilli, the patient will develop a nodule. This nodule slowly it starts growing and then it ulcerates and then heals poorly. This healing is poor because of the immunocompromised condition of the patient. And this uh, uh, nodule as it heals poorly, then it might result in a formation of a tubercle. That is when it attacks the regional lymph node uh, during the healing process, it is known as a tubercle. So the manifestation of the this uh, tuberculin in the primary infection uh, primary infection condition is known as uh, it comes under a type uh, 4 hypersensitivity which is a delayed type of hypersensitivity since a reaction is very late after taking uh, up to 1 to 2 weeks it is known as delayed hypersensitivity reaction Coming to the secondary infection, which is also known as Scott's phenomenon, where this person has identified that the tuberculosis bacillus, when it was injected intradermally in an already previously infected patients, we see that uh, the, there was one centimeter of dark induration, which was occurring, uh, um, uh, unlike a primary infection, it was occurring just one to two days after the uh, injection of the tuberculin. So it was uh, seen at that inoculation site, that is where the, where the, where the area where the tuberculin was injected, most commonly uh, the pre preferred area is the forearm area. And there was this dark induration was for further shoulder changes uh, like ulceration and then this uh, the healing of in case of secondary infection was quick when compared to the primary infection. And uh, another regional lymphos, regional lymph nodes were not affected in secondary infection whereas in the primary infection we saw that the regional lymph nodes have been affected. And this uh, hypersensitivity and the uh, this kind of reaction of the induration and quick healing uh, is an indicator that the patient is hypersensitive to the tuberculin as well as the immunity in the host is well developed. That is the bacilli are well developed with the host immune system. So this is what is secondary infection and the development of this one to one centimeter of dark induration uh, after one to two days uh, in a patient uh, who has been already infected with tuberculosis is known as Scott's phenomenon. Coming to the tuberculin or otherwise known as Mantox skin test, where a uh, tuberculin protein, uh, which is a PP, which has been uh, terminated as PPP, when it PPD, when it has been intradermally injected, that is a uh, 0.1 ml of this. Uh, tuberculin has been in, uh, intradermally injected into the patient, uh, then there was a type 4 hypersensitivity in individuals. This is known as delayed type of hypersensitivity. Coming to the tuberculin man, or otherwise known as Mantox skin test, usually in this uh, we see that there's intradermally a patient is being injected with tuberculin, which is a tubercular protein which is being derived from the attenuated uh, tuberculous uh, species, a uh, mycobacterium tuberculous species uh, of bovine. Um, so it is known as PPD, that is purifying protein derivative. So 0.1 ml of uh, this uh, tubercular protein is when it is being injected into the patient, usually at the site of forearm, uh, in the epidermal, uh, in the superficial layers of the skin, that is the epidermis. Uh, once it is injected, patient might show type 4 hypersensitivity or a delayed hypersensitivity uh, in an individual who have been previously infected or otherwise. Um, patients who are presently going on with the tuberculosis condition. So there was a type 4 hypersensitivity being developed in these patients when they have been injected with uh, this tubercular protein. And followed by uh, injection of this uh, tubercular protein, uh, um, in within 72 hours, patient usually uh, develops injurated area uh, which uh, measures more than 15 mm in diameter. So the patient is said to be positive for the tuberculosis, uh, presence of tuberculosis infection. So there is a test which is being most, uh, most commonly used as a diagnostic aid to give a diagnosis uh, that the patient is suffering from tuberculosis. So there is a picture showing uh, where the intradermally uh, the Mantox uh, a tubercular protein is being uh, injected into the patient where the it is being injected uh, into the superficial areas of the skin within the epidermis where uh, it is uh, it is consists of 0.1 ml of the tubercular protein and uh, immediately we see that there is a right side of the picture we see that there is an intradermal reaction uh, for the tuberculin which uh, shows a, a, a reaction within 48 to 72 hours uh, with an induration of uh, 15 m. This is a picture which demonstrates a mantox or a mantox or tuberculin test.
coming to the results usually we see that there's if the patient shows a positive test a positive uh, positivity for this uh, mantox suppose there's an induration proper induration within the set time of uh, 48 to 72 to hours then the patient is said to be that the cell mediated hypersensitivity that is a delayed type 4 hypersensitivity to the tuberculin antigens that is to the bacilli um, they uh, this hypersensitivity is because uh, it has developed because there's presence of the bacilli within the body who has been suspected with this tuberculosis and this um but uh, this uh, pres positive test it does not help in distinguishing the uh, difference between the infection and the disease that the patient has recently acquired or otherwise the disease has already been established so this is what means a uh, positive test in case of mantox test coming to the negative test we see that in disseminated cases of tuberculosis that is a tuberculosis which has been already established and from the lungs it starts moving and otherwise it's being spread throughout the body uh, these patients usually show a negative test for the mantoxes. This is because the tubercle, tuber, that is a bacterial part which is being spread within the body, they usually mask the hypersensitivity test, that is the endotuberculo proteins which are being released by this bacteria. They mask the they mask or um, they do not show the hypersensitivity reaction to occur because they are dominating then the T lymphocytes which actually uh, show the effect in the host immune system. Because of that, the, these uh, patients might show negative tests. But it doesn't mean that the patient, if it is negative, uh, is not a tuber. A patient who is not suffering from tuberculosis but sir, uh, certain other uh, advanced diagnostic age should be uh, suggested for the patient to uh, gone ahead in an already infected patient with tuberculosis. Coming to the false positive test, uh, we see usually in atypical mycobacterium infection that uh, it shows a false positive test since atypical mycobacterium infection is not as virulent as that of the classical mycobacterium tuberculosis. Coming to the false negative test, usually we see this condition for this Mantox test. We see in uh, sarcoidosis and other certain viral infections uh, and also in certain immune conditions such as Hodgkin's disease and palmative tuberculosis. So these are the conditions which show false negative tests for Mantox test. Coming to the immunization against the TB, usually patient uh, should is advised uh, to take a vaccination uh, that is a protective immunization with a uh, with the vaccine known as BCG, which stands for Bacillus calmity guarin, which is a tuberculin uh, anti uh, which is anti anti tuberculin, which protects our body from the Mycobacterium tuberculosis species. And usually we see uh, the uh, in, uh, in a patient who is immunized, uh, there's a healing lesion, which is uh, because of the cell mediated immunity with uh, along with the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction that is delayed type of hypersensitivity. So this cell mediated immunity, it usually persists, uh, which renders that the host tuberculin is positive and hence he is immune. So this is what is immunization against tuberculosis. Coming to what happens when a bacilli enters into the human body. Uh, so usually uh, it um, the most uh, prone area for the bacilli to start working is the lungs. This lung is because uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, they are the bacilli which only grow in presence of high oxygen tensions. That is their aerobic species which require only high oxygen, oxygen tension for them to grow. So um, these bacilli usually prefer lung for the uh, area for proper environment for them, there, for them to provide the oxygen. Coming to the um, sequential stages, what happens when a bacilli once it enters a tissue is once an intravenously tubercle bacilli has been injected into a guinea pig, an experimental condition has been done uh, to know what all reactions happen. So intravenously tubercle bacilli was being introduced, injected into a guinea pig species. Um, once this was injected, uh, it was seen that the bacilli, they lodge immediately within the pulmonary capillaries, as already said, because of the proper uh, uh, environment which they require to grow, bacilli require to grow. So once they lodge in the pulmonary capillaries, the initial responses and neutrophils start taking action against this bacilli in, the, in a normal individual with a host, uh, with a host proper host developed uh, host immune response. So in these patients, we see that this initial response uh, being taken against this bacilli because of the neutrophils by the host immune system. Then organisms are being rapidly destroyed because of this neutrophil uh, function, proper functioning of the neutrophils. Then 12 hours later, we see that there is progressive macrophage infiltration since the second line of defense cells uh, 
uh, macrophages after the neutrophils and the neutrophils since they have only a one to two day life uh, of uh, days of lifespan so these uh, neutrophils are being replaced by the macrophage infiltration after 12 hours of being injected with this uh, tu uh, intravenous tubercle bacilli then this macrophages then they become the dominant cells throughout the remaining life of the lesion that is uh, the bacilli which produces its lesion in spite of the host immune system uh, in this lesion we see uh, we see that the macrophages are the dominating cells so these macrophages what they do next is that if the tubercle bacilli is being inhaled into the lung alveoli directly into the lung alveoli not into the pulmonary capillaries then we see that the macrophages predominate and the major function of the macrophages is that they do phagocytosis that is they eat up the cell that is uh, they engulf the foreign antigen or the in case of tuberculosis we see that the bacilli which is a foreign antigen uh, once it is being in, uh, inter uh, once it starts entering into the host immune system then this is being absorbed by the neutrophils later by the macrophages which are the phagocytes they um, these macrophages uh, they develop uh, they show structural changes uh, to en enclose this uh, bacilli once they enclose this bacilli, uh, they are known as uh, uh, pseudopods, which are the structural changes which enclose this bacilli, and they start enclosing the uh, enclosing the complete uh, bacilli within the phagocytes, and they start eating up by producing certain enzymes which causes the digestion or the lysis of this bacilli. So this process is known as phagocytosis or cell eating. So macrophages they are usually function in phagocytosis normal uh, in a general patient in a general human being but we see that uh, this phagocytosis could be either it can kill the bacteria or otherwise in a uh, patient who is being infected that the phagocytosis uh, that they they, uh, they themselves might die and once they die themselves they might proliferate locally and they release a macro they, uh, and the number of macrophages uh, um, it starts increasing in that particular area from because of the production of uh, um, from the monocytes as monocytes are being uh, macrophages are being produced from the monocytes they start increasing in number if suppose these macrophages are the digested themselves so this is what happens when the tubercle bacilli is being introduced into a uh, introduced into a host so the next stage is that the body starts showing its immune response by initiating the activation of the T lymphocy lymphocytes, uh, the T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes. Among the T lymphocytes, it is the CD4 T cells which show their action. And the CD4 T lymphocytes, what they do is they start uh, provoking the cell mediated immunity as well as the delay type of hypersensitivity reactions which act against this tuberculous bacilli whereas the b cells uh, as we know they are the cells which are usually involved in production of the antibody so this antibody is being produced by the b cells this is what uh, is being function against the bacilli of the host immune system then uh, once the lesion is being established then it forms a granuloma so this granuloma how it is formed is so the macrophages which are in function at the area or uh, the site of bacilli uh, which has been lodged we see that two to three days later that the lesion it starts showing its effect where the macrophages ins, uh, ins, uh, instead of uh, fighting against the bacilli they themselves which have engulfed this bacilli they show structural changes that is these are uh, macrophages uh, more than two or three macrophages they fuse together and they form a epithelioid it is so called epithe when these macrophages fuse they, they are known as epithelioids this co called epithelioid because these epithelioid cells they usually resemble that of the epithelium cells which appear homogeneous ethnophilic with a vesicular nucleus that is which is the with an enlarged nucleus which is placed in the center of the cell so they appear as the epith epithelial cells so these macrophages which are fused together they are known as epithelioid cells so these epithelioid cells together aggregate together and they result in the formation of granulomas as which can be seen in the picture so this granuloma it is microscopically seen as a uh, structureless tissue which is being loosely seen with um, granulation tissue formation as well as presence of certain giant cells as well as macrophages coming to the multinuclear giant cell formation how the giant cells form within the granuloma so the macrophages the macrophages which have failed to show the function of phagocytosis which have failed to show the destruction of the bacilli they again further fuse to form and result in the formation of giant cells so in tuberculosis we see two types of giant cells it could be the Langhans type of giant cells or the foreign body type of giant cells in the Langhans type of giant cells we usually see that the Langhans type of giant cells shows the 
a well large uh, cell with a uh, two uh, with nuclei which are arranged in a horseshoe type or otherwise uh, with nuclei which have been divided to the opposite pole and form a semicircle ring and this known uh, this is a characteristic feature of how a langhans type of giant cell appears coming to the foreign body type of giant cells this is a giant cell which appears larger in shape but which shows a central area of the arrangement of the nuclei which are placed centrally so there is one of the histopathological picture showing the presence of the giant cell coming to the hard tubercle and the soft tubercle so uh, within the initial stages once a granuloma is formed we see that uh, the granuloma uh, in the central area which is being present with epithelioid cells and the um, macrophages uh, it is being uh, which are being centrally placed and peripherally being covered with infiltrating cells they are the lymphocytes plasma cells and so this is what we see uh, so this is what we see in a granuloma that is a uh, in a tubercle uh, which we see that centrally placed is the uh, granulation tissue which is structureless and peripherally with lymphocytes plasma cells and neutrophils and certain other infiltrating uh, inflammatory infiltrating cells so we see in a hard tubercle this is known as hard tubercle because there's lack of uh, there's no abs uh, there's absence of caseation necrosis but once uh, this uh, Heart tubercle further progresses uh, as days pass by. Then there's a uh, caseation necrosis, which is being undergone by the cells which are present at the center. They show caseation necrosis, and this caseation necrosis, because of its uh, presence of a soft nature, it is known as uh, because of this characteristic feature of pro pro producing a soft kind of uh, consistency, it is known as soft tubercle. Usually, we see in a patient with tuberculosis, there's presence of soft tuberculosis. This is all the picture shows that uh, the heart tubercle is showing the presence of epithelioid cells uh, langhart's giant cells as well as lymphocytes and fibroblasts where the epithelioid cells usually present uh, within uh, the cavity of the tubercle and peripherally being surrounded by the lymphocytes and the fibroblasts and whereas in a soft tubercle we see that there's presence of central caseation necrosis which gives us a soft consistency and this is being produced because of the action of the cd4 t lymphocytes which start which try to fight against these epithelioid cells but rather they show release the cytokines which results in the formation of tuberculosis coming to the fate of tuberculosis it might result in the formation of collapses collapses it is so called because this caseation necrosis as days pass by usually it starts draining and results in producing uh, infiltrating uh, cells of this uh, granuloma which might uh, become which might uh, spread to the other areas so, so it is known as collapses other than that when the tissues like bone or lymph node are being involved then the tuberculous area then the tuberculous granuloma they might uh, divide and they spread uh, within the sinus tracts where they of this uh, bone and lymphoid tissue where they keep uh, these uh, granulomatous of tissue of the tuberculosis it's seen lining these tissues so it is one also one of the fate of the granuloma that it starts showing lining the the tissue like bone and lymph nodes and sinus tracts they start showing lining of this tuberculous granuloma other than that the, when there's we see an enlarging uh, enlarging lesion of the tuberculous bacilli um, tubercle we see that there is a progressive enlargement of this uh, tissue that's uh, that thereby the surrounding tissue which lacks nutrition might undergo progressive fibrosis but in long standing cases of this tubercle we see that there is dystrophic calcification that is um, these uh, tubercle bacilli are being uh, deposited, deposited with uh, calcium as well as certain other mineral salts from the blood and this since this occurs in a dead and dying tissue it is known as dystrophic calcification other than that even this dystrophic calcification might also progress into ossification that is bone deposition on these calcified areas might result in ossification of that area so there's a micrograph which is being stained of a tuberculous lesion with an hematoxylin and eosin stain where we see central area which is eosinophilic loose structureless and uh, peripherally the first arrow mark and the arrow mark downwards shows the uh, langhans type of giant cells with proper horseshoe shape arrangement of the nuclei 
coming to the types of tuberculosis based on the type of the tissue response and age of the patient we can see tuberculosis is of two types that is a primary tuberculosis and secondary tuberculosis coming to the primary tuberculosis also known as pri uh, primary complex uh, or gons complex or gons focus or also known as childhood tuberculosis this is so called as childhood tuberculosis because it's being involved in general in involving ch children so it is also it was previously identified where that the childhood age group has, has been more commonly affected with this primary infection it was known as childhood tb so an infection in an individual who has not been previously infected or immunized is known as primary tuberculosis as the patient is being freshly infected with this um, foreign antigens and in such patients we usually see that this uh, complex or the lesion which is formed uh, in this primary tuberculosis it consists of three components that is the pulmonary component lymphatic vessel component and the lymph node component so these are the components which we see in primary tuberculosis so the primary tuberculosis uh, it, the main area where it occurs is in the lungs then followed by that as the uh, tonsillar area so we see that uh, primary tuberculosis when it starts entering the lung uh, we see three components uh, in the lesions involving the lung that is a pulmonary component uh, which is seen within the lung with 1 to 3 mm of the lesion uh, as the picture shows uh, we see that, that uh, along with that we see in a developing lesion there is a, a usually with uh, tuberculous pneumonia uh, which is being peripherally located uh, along uh, uh, with the central area of pleurisy so this is what we see in a pulmonary component and this pulmonary component microscopically uh, when we see under a microscope uh, with the stained or proper staining uh, of the uh, tissue we see that there is a central caseous necrosis uh, most commonly which is a predominating feature with the uh, necrotic material which can be seen so this is what includes a pulmonary component and it is a uh, if this pulmonary component starts progressing it might involve the other areas that is a pericardium or otherwise it might uh, where the uh, area within the lungs only might uh, get affected because of the uh, transformation of this bacilli through the pulmonary veins uh, which are being carried out uh, otherwise it can also cause uh, by the fusion of the uh, pleura that might but it might also cause thickness of the pleura and uh, resulting in its infl uh, inflammation uh, which might result in pleuritis coming to the next component that is a lymphatic vessel component so the lymphatics which drain these lymph nodes uh, usually uh, show this uh, that they uh, consist of phagocytes within this uh, drain uh, lymphatics which have been drained which uh, these phagocytes which have failed to engulf the bacteria uh, rather they carry the bacteria and they cause uh, they may develop a bearded appearance known as miliary tuberculosis which might be seen in the lymph lymphatic vessel component of the primary tuberculosis. So the pulmonary component here, it can also be called as a pulmonary focus or primary focus because of its appearance uh, in the form of uh, with uh, central uh, pleurisy um, surrounded by tuberculous pneumonia. Coming to the third component, that is a lymph node, lymph node component. Usually, there is we see that there are enlarged lymph nodes of the that is the hilar lymph nodes as well as the tracheobrachial lymph nodes. They are usually enlarged in cases of uh, lymph uh, when the lymph node component is being uh, observed, and uh, microscopically it gives a matted appearance with a caseous uh, caseation necrosis. So this is what is a primary tuberculosis. Coming to the fate of the primary tuberculosis, that is the sequential changes which we see after once primary focus or the primary complex is being formed with the three components, that is the pulmonary component, lymphatic component and the lymph node component. We see that uh, these lesions, they usually heal by fibrosis uh, uh, with progressive uh, peripheral fibrosis and central enlarging caseation necrosis and otherwise long-standing lesion as these lesions progress uh, without healing, they might either undergo calcification, that is the dystrophic calcification or otherwise they might undergo ossification by the deposition of the bone material otherwise uh, as these lesions progress uh, uh, these primary lesions they might also cause a progressive primary tuberculosis rather than being healed these lesions are usually progress and they are being spread throughout the body that is by disseminated um, tuberculosis can be seen and other than that condition, another condition which can be seen is primary miliary tuberculosis. That is these primary lesions which are formed in the primary tuberculosis. These lesions, uh, they might erode the blood vessels and uh, start uh, uh, being uh, 
invading into other parts of the tissues through the blood vessels this is known as miliary tuberculosis since it is because of the primary complex it is known as primary miliary tuberculosis or otherwise uh, it could the other fate of the primary tuberculosis it could also be the lesion which has been healed but there has been further reactivation of the lesion because of the exaggerated hyperinsensitivity of the host immune system or otherwise the lower resistance of the host immune system it might result in reactivation of the already healed lesions otherwise it could also be it might progress into the secondary tuberculosis which will be discussed further so the secondary tuberculosis it is an infection uh, in a previously infected person or the patient which has been already sensitized so it is also known as post primary or otherwise post primary tuberculosis or otherwise reinfection tuberculosis or chronic tuberculosis for instance it's a long standing tuberculosis and uh, uh, starts slowly developing so the infection with secondary tuberculosis it could be because of the endogenous source or the exogenous source that is endogenous source is a source uh, occurring within the uh, within the by the human uh, individual uh, infected individual because of the unhealed uh, primary tuberculosis that is a uh, as we have seen as one of the sequelae of the primary complex is a progressive secondary tuberculosis so the primary complex could be one of the uh, source so when the primary complex is a source it is known as endogenous source because the bacilli present within the individual starts get uh, starts reactivating the already healed lesion and might result in secondary uh, tuberculosis which is known as post primary or reinfection tuberculosis coming to the exogenous source it could be because of the fresh infection from the bacilli of an already infected person and was being healed so there is known as exogenous source so the most common areas where we see in secondary tuberculosis is the lungs and that too in the apex region of the lung this is a most commonly prone area for the secondary tuberculosis could be done followed by lungs uh, the next following area regions in the decreasing order they are the tonsils followed by pharynx larynx small intestine and finally the skin these are the areas which show the presence of secondary tuberculosis so we see how the secondary tuberculosis occurs usually we see that the lesion uh, appears as a constellation uh, uh, which is which measures 1 to 2 cm in diameter uh, and this constellation usually uh, as the lesion progresses it might show uh, central uh, caesation necrosis followed by peripheral fibrosis because since the lesion starts enlarging centrally it starts peripherally showing fibrosis and the secondary lesion and when it is because of the primary complex the it could be because of the spread of the primary complex through the hematogenous spread that is through the blood the primary lesion starts spreading through the blood uh, then it is known as disseminated or miliary tuberculosis then this starts affecting the apex of the affected lung so as we have seen there is a most prone area for the secondary tuberculosis to occur and microscopically that is a secondary lesion of the tuberculosis when we see under a microscope the tissue which has been obtained from the gross specimen that it appears as a tuberculous granuloma with along with central caesation necrosis so these are the characteristic microscopic features of a secondary tuberculosis and we see hiv patients are most commonly infected with the secondary tuberculosis because of the reactivation of the primary tuberculosis and the species which is causing is mycobacterium avium intracellularly which causes most commonly second tuber secondary tuberculosis in immunocompromised condition of a hiv patient coming to the fate of the secondary primary tuberculosis how it starts healing or it undergoes further changes of the from the secondary complex that is from the tuberculous granuloma caesation necrosis they might um, result in fibrous scarring that is by the, uh, the kind of healing um, secondary healing if they do not heal they might undergo calcification because of the over deposition of the calcium salts and otherwise we can also see that there's tuberculous pneumonia which is uh, uh, which has been seen in primary tuberculosis it is also one of the sequelae for the development of secondary tuberculosis and other than that the secondary lesion can also be progressive it might result in a progressive secondary pulmonary tuberculosis which could be involving within the lung that is it is known as pulmonary involvement that is in an already infected area might also progress to an other area of the lung or otherwise um, within the path it is uh, most commonly occurs because of its passage through the pulmonary vein the bacilli might be carried through the pulmonary vein otherwise it could also be the extra pulmonary areas that is it could be the extra pulmonary regions other than the lungs that is the tonsils larynx and pharynx can also be involved we see that there's a there's a fibrocalcius tuberculosis that is a tuberculous pneumonia uh, we see in this uh, region uh, with central caesation necrosis in case of fibrocalcius tuberculosis 
fibrocasis tuberculosis this is what we see in an extra when there's an extra pulmonary involvement otherwise uh, it could also be in tuberculosis caseation pneumonia that is uh, this uh, pneumonia tuberculosis pneumonia might progress and result in caseation progressive caseation necrosis or otherwise when this uh, secondary complex starts eroding the blood vessels and then it starts entering the hematogenous route that is the blood circulation then it is known as miliary tuberculosis so these are the sequelae or the progression of the secondary pulmonary tuberculosis when they involve the extra pulmonary involvement so coming to the symptoms general of the tuberculosis, we see that there's ester when the tuberculosis is being established, we see there's this productive cough, and this cough uh, with product, with the coughing of blood is known as hemoptosis, which is also one of the condition which we see uh, in uh, tuberculosis. Along with that, we also see coughing of uh, increasing uh, mucus, uh, which might contain these bacteria, which is used for culture. So the, this is seen, uh, coughing of uh, mucus and coughing of hemoptosis is seen when the there's dormant, uh, return of the dormant tuberculosis, that is an inactivated tuberculosis, which is showing a phase of relapse, which gets reactivated. And other than this, uh, the general symptoms could be uh, systematic symptoms. We see night sweats, dry cough, uh, weight loss, un um, unexpected or unwanted weight loss uh, with uh, any uh, proper uh, underlying uh, features and other than that we also see loss of appetite in the patient um, we see also weakness of the patient with these are the certain systemic uh, features and uh, we see your uh, gastrointestinal symptoms that is uh, which could be an extra pulmonary symptoms where it might also involve the gastrointestinal tract other than that the extra pulmonary sites then the other than the gastrointestinal uh, tract is the bone and the joints we see where we see the tuberculous granulomas they start lining these sinus tracts which is also one of the sequelae of the developing tuberculosis in first primary complex the lymph nodes which are most commonly involved suppose if it is in the small intestine it is a mesentric lymph nodes suppose it is in the lung they are the hilar lymph nodes which are being affected so these are the uh, the regional lymph nodes are usually primarily being affected but it is not necessary that the regional lymph nodes should always be affected yeah, other than that, this is a meninges that is a, when it involves the brain, it might cause the brain tuberculosis also. When it involves the pleuritis, it might cause the chest pain. Um, these are certain symptoms uh, which, might, which are seen usually involving in tuberculosis. Coming to the diagnostic aid, as already discussed, Mantox uh, skin test is a first primary diagnostic aid, followed by that a chest x-ray is being advised for the patient. Among the chest x-ray, we see in the pictures, the first pictures uh, that the uh, arrows, uh, first black arrows where we see pleurisy and thereby there is a uh, the white arrows we see that there's enlargement of this uh, uh, with surrounding peripheral uh, tuberculous pneumonia uh, whereas in the next picture we see that there's a because of the uh, infection we see that there's decrease in the size of the lung uh, because of the pleurisy and coming to the sputum culture uh, when it is being uh, cultured we see that there's presence of filamentous rod like bacilli they are the tuberculous bacilli mycobacterium species and coming to the FNAC that uh, in a lesion uh, that such as in caseous necrosis we uh, we uh, we usually suggest uh, the uh, the uh, fluid to be aspirated where a fine little aspiration cytology is being suggested where the fluid in the suspected lesion area of lesion uh, the fluid is being aspirated with the help of a proper uh, sterile and sterile conditions and we see once it is being stained with the general hematoxylin and eosin stain or gram stain we see that there's a uh, when there's presence of mycobacteria under a microscope in this FNAC, then the diagnosis of mycobacterium tuberculosis can be given for the patient. So these are few diagnostic aids. Other than that, the major demonstration is with gram staining. Gram staining is one of the diagnostic aid uh, when it could be from the sputum of the uh, staining or from the smutum or the smears which have been taken from the area being infected. These are certain one of the diagnostic aids where we see other than that most commonly used is acid fast stains among them zeal stain is one of the stain in this acid fast stain uh, because of the presence of mycolic acid and other lipids which are being present within the cell wall as already uh, is, uh, discussed the glycolipids and the myco uh, mycocytes 
these lipids usually resist uh, staining from the general stain so acid fast is a stain which is being uh, uh, which is being most commonly used where uh, these bacilli since they are acid fast they resist the acid uh, and the alcohol so they, uh, they, they there's discolorization which is being done with sulfuric acid which results in the acid fast stain that is a zeal and acid stain that is a uh, the picture they can be observed in a violet or a purple color stain of that is the presence of bacilli. The other stains are the fluorescent dye methods where the fluorescent colors are being used and the other method is a guinea pig inoculation method where the uh, experimental animals such as guinea pig where they are being inoculated or injected with an intradermal or intravenous tuberculin which starts showing the presence of the starts showing the action how the lesion starts developing and the recent methods is the polymerase chain reaction where we can see the patient uh, being infected can be diagnosed with the help of polymerase chain reaction and then the culture usually lowest in Johnson uh, median is, uh, is a culture media which is being used for the uh, to, uh, to identify the colonies of the mycobacterium tuberculosis so there are, these are few demonstration uh, demonstrating aids for the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis species